I just talked to my father about coming in. He wants to do his uh, interviews with the people. Like you see, I cleaned the studio up over here. They all see that. Yeah. I built another studio on the other side so that he can have people can sit in a chair and talk. So I mean, he's he's ready. You know, he says that's my project. I got my project. Another project. Okay, well let's get going. I got that project going on. And we got a project too. It's called the Vintner Series for April of 2015. And our first wine. Go ahead, run with it. My first wine might be yeah, um, run with it. Pinot Noir. Go ahead, from, from, to do with from PAF. Yeah, yeah, it's all your show. Go okay, ahead. go ahead. Well, you got the wine though. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, let's try to reach. This is over. from your friend. My friend, yes. Actually, uh, the wine is from where our wine license is up in uh, Binda Bottle in Napa, and we labeled it. He this knows is, something I don't know. This is a brand, Paf. Paf. Yeah. You know what Paf means in French? You tried to tell me. And in fact, I've asked a lot of people, French uh, people, that don't know the word. And then one girl recited some terms, like a, a phrase in a book, and she goes, oh, it means like really messed up in the head, like screwed up. You know, it's a picture. brilliant, brilliant name for a bottle of wine. Look at that thing. You know, I mean, well, that that definitely is. Okay, so it's funny. Up. We submitted this to the feds, right? Yeah. And they rejected it. And they wanted to know what this word rewards was for. See, it's rewards in his mouth. And it says the three rewards, three with rewards. Well, I wrote back, I said, the artist takes random papers from different places and paints on them. And this happens to be a Starbucks uh, flyer on their rewards program. And, and this, the feds wanted to know why we had rewards in the guy's mouth. Okay. Cricket, <laughs> cricket, 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 cricket. That sounds like path to me. <laughs> But well, anyway, this is a great Pinot Noir. It's, uh, it's a Sonoma, right? No, Russian River. Russian, well, it's Sonoma. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, that's that's a that's a pretty high rent district for Pinot Noir. Okay. I mean, really, uh, Russian River. They start at forty bucks, even if there's and there's no wine in it. You just get the bottle and the label for that. You know. Um, Not a label like this would be forty two dollars. Yeah, forty two dollars because you get rewards. Right. Um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, this is spectacular. I mean, this I love this one. It's, it actually, I, I'm not a huge fan of Russian River because I think they, they lack finish. You know, this wine has got some authority to it, some finish to it, and, and that's what it makes it kind of a, you know, a, a rather big, bold Pinot Noir. And this was just put in the bottle, so it's going to change. Mm -hmm. It's going to fatten a little bit. But right now, I love the flavor profile. Amazing. Absolutely amazing for just putting the bottle. 20, Twenty-two ninety-nine on the shelf is a joke price. I mean that's really that's really. Well, we were thinking about question. draining the wine out and selling it for twenty two, with the bottle. I think you could do that. I really do. I but, really, so but, certainly with the reward program. But then the we figured we'll put the wine back in and sell it for twelve ninety nine. So clip me off a piece of that. You know this guy. This guy. You know that's he's you know, a genius. He's business, just man. he's just a walk and talking that's genius. Why we're here. You know so twelve ninety nine. Uh, uh, the reward price is killer. I mean I'm I'm going, I'm going ninety five on that. Yeah ninety five ninety six for me ninety five point five, for the editor of this video. And a half. So. So, uh, what's his name came in last week? Trinchero. What's his name? I'll never forget him. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, But not Bob. The, uh, is Bob still alive even? Yeah, he's still alive. Okay. He's so still around. His winemaker that makes the Trinchero. Trinchero is Sutter Home, which makes famous, of course, Wise Infant and many, many other wines. But the, the winemaker they hired just for the Trinchero family brand. Mm -hmm. Nice guy, young guy. And then, about two hours later, in comes this young, uh, uh, not young, but uh, gentleman from Provence. They make two rosés down in this Provence. That's all they make. So I had, back to back, I had the guy that made White Zinfandel, which was, <laughs> what, you know, put, put rosé on the map of California, but everybody hates it now. And then I brought in this beautiful boutique dry rosé guy from the oh, South. Oh, wow. It was really interesting. Monte Volpe, our friend George Skorka, wonderful Hungarian uh, wine broker. But this, I like this wine because it has, it's, a, it's from an Italian winemaker. And it's got that it's got that indigenous Italian white wine character. It's a 2012. Greg Graciano, I know him well. Do you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice guy. He's made he's damn good wine See, maker. you know that nose is just classic Italian indigenous white wine. Yeah, it's a little bit old school, old world nose. Mmm. But expansive, full flavors in the mouth. That's delicious. Love it. Yeah. I forgot what's in it. You wrote this. 
Oh, um, Chick Kitchen Sink. I mean, you know, it's got, oh my God, it's got Pinot Arnaise, Grigio. it's got Pinot Grigio, it's got, I think, Vermentino. Arnaise. It's got Arnaise. You grew Arnaise in California? Yeah, some couple of people are, you know. It's Mendocino Canada. Arnaise is like one of my favorite Italian white wines. I love it, you know, but this is a killer bottle of wine. I mean, uh, it'd be sixteen ninety nine on the shelf, eleven ninety nine on the reorder this price. This is why the nose is. It's got the classic Italian white grape nose. I mean, I love this old school world nose. Really, really nice. I, I'm, I'm doing a 94. I think it's, I think it's spectacular. Mm. Mm-hmm. Funny thing about White Zinfandel, I mean, okay, and that is that um, when when the Wait, first vintage of you still taste that, yeah, you can still get yeah. it. Sure, when you when you the first vintage of, of Sutter Home White Zin was 1972, and I remember I was working at the, at his dad's store when when that wine came in. We didn't even unload the truck before we broke the case open and tried the bottle because we went, we got to try this wine. We can't wait. We've been talking about it and talking about it. Okay. It was one of the driest wines I've ever had in my life. It would absolutely tear the tartar off your teeth. I mean, we liked it, but we're going, wow, this is really good. Totally, totally white. Totally white. There was not one hint of color on this wine whatsoever, what? which means it had no contact with the skins whatsoever. And it was it, it, and they made it like that for like four years. And How do you remember that? Well, because it was a it was a momentous. I remember everything about momentous, <laughs> momentous, and momentous. And so anyway, it was really funny because then they had a stuck fermentation, and they they couldn't you know they they couldn't get the sugar out of the wine, so they released it, and it sold out three times faster than any of the ones put other ones put together, and that was the end of that. You know this I was when I, I was gonna guess this is Carmenere because of the nose, that smoky. Oh, there's a the vegetable. I love that Chilean vegetable nose. It's just, it's just. Mm, man, is that dense. I love that. Oh, God, all I get is chocolate out of that sucker. <clears throat> I mean, that is like chocolate, cocoa, licorice, earth. Big wow. monster wine. Gosh. It's totally different than the nose, though. No. I don't get that. Ve- I mean, a wonderful vegetal. The, the veggie starts to blow uh, off, though, you know. Mm. Now it's really starting to go away, but man, I still get that licorice. You know? That's serious. Yeah, it's really good. Tw- that's, three, that's a 97. Twenty-two dollars uh, on the shelf at twelve ninety-nine order it. price. Oh, sorry, we s- we're not done oh, yet. Okay, so we're not starting. <laughs> I got to take these toys away from them. That's all there is to it. I'm doing a ninety-seven on that too. Yeah, that's amazing. Too. That's, that's a big monster. I one. forgot. I forgot. You know, I can. T- I, by the way, have you paid your taxes? Well, no, why? Don't remind me. You know, because I can get you out of them. <laughs> How are you going to do that? Just just tell them, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Steve Martin joke. Oh, right. Steve Martin, the guy I was on the dating game. That's with. right. <laughs> oh, we gotta, you know what? i got to put that on the website. No. I'm going to do that, folks. Ed was on a dating game with Steve Martin, and he lost to Steve Martin, unfortunately. No, I actually, yeah, I did lose to Steve Martin. Of course, you could have been Steve Martin if you played the banjo. Well, the funny part about the taping of that show is that I was at the Smothers Brothers studio that day interviewing Steve Martin, and we were both going to be on the same show not knowing it, and we didn't want to mention that we were going from CBS to ABC, so I basically followed him in his yellow Mustang from CBS to ABC. I turn around at makeup, and he's and I go, what are you doing here? He said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm on the show. He said, well, I'm on the show. I said, well, oh, let, I'll finish funny. my interview. <laughs> That is really funny. great guy, really fun guy. We some... found that clip on what YouTube. We found it. Yeah, that's that's when I first met Pat, uh, Pat Polson. Yeah, and the Smothers Brothers. You know, it was like Corinto. This, this is our old boys. Our another old boys, sa- another uh, South American uh, Chardonnay. Chardonnay, but this is much fatter than the uh, Gaucho, and w- much more California-like. Mm-hmm. The nose and the character. But it still has that green apple in the in the in the mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you still and a little bit of lime, a little right bit of middle. citrus. Oh, the lime is for sure. Right? You know, but a it's a lime. really well-made bottle of wine. And I mean, you know, I love these guys. I like all their wines. You know, we great I, you do too many Corinto wines, Paul. You know that. No, I haven't we, done that many lately. But this is, I don't know. We've done quite recently. a few, and they're well, how can you argue? Eighteen ninety on the shelf, eleven ninety nine for more. Ah, uh, what can it's you say? It's a ninety six for me. I'm doing 95, but who cares? Um, that's the Vintner series for April 2015. I like the lime comment. There's a little lime in there, yeah? Yeah, there is. I just, How about that? 